cost of education, cost of living, work-life balance, travel. These are the reasons why I decided to leave California for Europe back in 2018. I never thought that I would ever leave California, nor did I ever think I would be here in Europe. Don't get me wrong, I love California. I grew up in San Francisco, I went to school at UCLA and spent around 10 years living, studying, and working in LA before coming back to San Francisco. Now I know there's like a million videos out there on YouTube about why people are leaving California, why people have left California because of politics, because of homelessness, because of taxes. But I decided to leave for personal reasons. I wanted to explore a different part of the world. Europe. Okay, so if I take a step back, I would say that my main reason for coming in Europe was because I wanted to fulfill a life goal of living abroad in a place like Europe. And in order to do that, I needed to do a master's program because I found out that it seemed like every job here requires a master's. So the cost of education became extremely important. And the cost of education in Europe is a lot cheaper than the US. And the second reason is the cost of living and affordability. It's a lot cheaper, in my opinion, to live a high quality life here in Europe than it is to live in a place like San Francisco or LA. And number three, the work-life balance. I feel like Europeans get it when it comes to balance. I mean, they have so much vacation and they take it. And number four, I would say travel is a lot easier here and a lot cheaper to travel around Europe because the infrastructure is built for travel. Okay, let's talk about education. So when I was trying to get to Europe, I was actually first trying to look for a job, but I found it extremely difficult because it seemed like every job required a master's degree. And later I found out why. It was because the cost of education in Europe is so cheap that it logically makes sense for someone to do a master's degree after a bachelor's program. So it seems like a master's degree in Europe is sort of like a bachelor's degree in the US. Everyone seems to have one, especially in the knowledge field. So then it came down to what kind of degree do I want to get? Where did I want to study? And it logically made sense for me to do a program in Europe because the cost of education in the US is exponentially higher than it is in Europe. It's infamous student debt in the US. Now, when I was researching programs, I found a program in the Netherlands, which I ended up doing, which was a one-year program, $16,000 in tuition, compared to a two-year program in the US, $80,000 in tuition. So I saved over $60,000 just in tuition. Now, when you break down everything, the total cost, cost of living, tuition, everything, I ended up spending around $30,000 in one year in the Netherlands, which included traveling to over 10 countries. Now, if I did a budget for how much I would have spent in the US doing that two-year program, it would have cost me $130,000. So I saved $100,000 by studying one year in Europe, which also allowed me to eventually find a job in Europe. Also, the quality of education here is quite high. Although you pay less money, that does not mean the quality of the education is also less. It was on par to my education at UCLA. Okay, costs of living and affordability. It's kind of crazy when you think that a family of four making $117,000 in San Francisco is considered poor. That's right, if you're a family making $117,000, six figures, you're considered poor living in San Francisco. And that's because San Francisco has some of the highest rents in the world, some of the highest housing prices. Okay, let's break this down. In San Francisco, the average cost of rent for a one bedroom, 790 square foot house is $3.1,000. And the average price of a home in San Francisco nowadays is $1.3 million. That's why 10% of the population of San Francisco is in that poverty category. And okay, if you're living in LA, you're paying a little bit less money for a home. You're paying maybe $800,000 for a home and you're paying $2,400 for a one bedroom apartment. So 
California is a big state and I'm only referring to LA and San Francisco, but the cost of living has gone up exponentially in both of those cities over the past 10, 20 years. And it's gotten to a point where many people who don't work in certain industries, they can't afford to live in the city. And as a result of the high cost of living in a place like San Francisco, LA, it's driven out a lot of professions. One of the things I remember most about growing up in San Francisco 20 years ago was its diversity. Diversity in immigrants and professions. But when I came back to San Francisco after living in LA for 10 years, what I found out was that many professions, artists, teachers, many professions were driven out of the city because they could not afford to live in a place like San Francisco. Some of the artists I talked to while volunteering, they said they had to leave their homes because they couldn't afford to live there. And they're commuting maybe one to two hours into the city in order to work in the city. So here's the thing about living in a place like San Francisco or LA. The quality of life can be quite high if, and that's a big if, you can afford to live there. Otherwise, if you work in a profession like teachers or if you're an artist, these are professions that are not paid very high in the US and to live as a teacher, you might have to work two jobs in order to live in a city like San Francisco. Work-life balance. Europeans seem to understand what that concept means. I remember traveling and every time I travel, I always met Europeans and these Europeans, it seemed like they were always traveling. How much vacation do you have? And then I learned that they all had four weeks, five weeks, sometimes six weeks of vacation. And the thing about Europeans is that they take each and every single one of their vacation days. Whereas in the US, Americans get the standard two weeks and the US is the only developed country in the world that does not have a federally mandated vacation time, meaning there's no legal minimum. It depends on the company. And Americans actually don't use up all their vacation days. So even if you get two weeks of vacation time, it's rare to find someone that will use up the full two weeks. Let me give you an example. I never used up all my vacation time when I worked in the US. Even when I had five weeks of vacation, I might have only used two and a half weeks, but I never used up the full five weeks, the full three weeks, because I think it's something to do with the mindset. If I took all my vacation days, what would my manager think of me? What would people think about me? Laziness? It's just that mindset that I shouldn't be able to take up all my vacation days because I needed to work. I also remember the first vacation I ever took as a full-time worker. I took a two-week vacation to, to China. I actually went to this very remote village and I found out that they had Wi-Fi at the hotel. And so I actually brought my laptop with me on that two week vacation. And I remember checking my email. And so that's the type of culture that we live in, that many of us live in. It's hard to shut off. And here's the thing about Europe. The European Union actually has a minimum amount of holidays that you need to give employees that minimum number of vacation days is 20 days or four weeks. So you get a minimum of four weeks if you work in the EU, but many countries give more than four weeks. For example, I work in a company in the Netherlands and we get five weeks of vacation every year. And the thing about it is when I ask people, do you actually use up all your vacation time? Most people said, yes, of course. Why wouldn't I? Now, this is pre-COVID times, but it seems like people here, they get five weeks and they will use up all five weeks in one given year. So this was one reason why I decided to come to Europe because I heard about this concept of work-life balance and I really wanted to understand what that really meant. And I didn't know what that meant until I came here, which meant taking time for yourself, taking up your holiday time, your vacation time, 
Okay, so on top of that work-life balance and on top of those five weeks, six weeks of vacation days, traveling in Europe is extremely easy and affordable. The infrastructure is built for getting around and for traveling. They have budget airlines, for example, Ryanair, EasyJet. They advertise these deals from time to time where you can buy a $1 flight that gets you from one country to another country. I bought a flight from the Netherlands to Slovakia for 11 euros. And from there, I bought a $20 Flixbus ticket to get me to Austria, Vienna. So I was able to visit two countries for less than 50 bucks. I mean, California is great. California has it all from beaches to mountains to cities to hiking. California is amazing, but it is a big state. And when I was living in a place like San Francisco, I would drive down to LA, take me six hours, but I was still in the same state. Yes, there are differences, but for the most part, it feels the same. But in Europe, and if you drive six hours, more than likely you'll be in another country, sometimes two countries within six hours. Now, when you think about California, if you want to be in technology, you should go to California. If you want to be in entertainment, you should go to California. It's the Mecca for tech and entertainment and never have I been in a place where I was surrounded by this energy of ambition. Your community, whether you're in San Francisco for tech or LA for entertainment, there's a big power in being surrounded by your tribe your community. And so if that's the place you want to be for tech, for Hollywood, I think California is the best place to be. Don't get me wrong. I love California. I still do. My family still lives in California, most of my friends, and I still think it's one of the best places to be in the world. Now for me, the reason why I left was because I grew up in California. I spent most of my life in California, in San Francisco, in LA. Things had changed. I also changed as a person. And therefore, I wanted to explore more of this world, more of this life. And that's why I decided to come explore Europe.